Hey everyone, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. Today is Wednesday, March 19th, 2025. Mount Spur there in Alaska is showing ongoing unrest with elevated seismicity, but no eruption is currently going on as of today. Scientists are saying that this volcano could erupt within weeks or months. Mount Spur formed forms the southern buttress of the Tordrillo Range with an active vent on the crater peak below the summit. This 11,070-foot volcano last erupted in September of 1992 and covered the region with 8 inches of volcanic ash and shut down the regional airports in Alaska's largest city for several days. Spur rises 80 miles due west of Anchorage and is visible from there in the distant horizon. ABC News reported Mount Spurs is closer to an eruption with gas emissions up to 250 metric tons daily by March 7th of this year. Just back in December, it was emitting 50 tons of gas emissions and now it's up to 450 tons of it daily. It has been suggested that the next eruption would be similar to the eruption in 1953 and 1992. Past eruptions like the one in 1992 called caused ashfall in Anchorage, disrupted air travel for days, and it's only 75 miles west, so impacts could be significant if it erupts again. If an eruption happens, it might be explosive lasting hours and producing ash clouds that travel hundreds of miles based on historical events. Scientists indicate that eruptions likely within weeks or a month given the recent activity, and this could affect air travel if ash clouds form. Earthquake activity is also up with over 100 weekly quakes and hundreds since April of last year, plus 2.5 inches of ground swelling has been detected uplift. Currently, experts expect more seismic activity, more gas emissions, and surface heating before an eruption. They're hoping this should give residents and authorities extra warning time. Going to Google Earth, here is Mount Spur, and it is near the Cook Inlet there in Alaska. Yeah, you can see different earthquakes that I got listed here. But we'll go to Anchorage to get an idea how close it is to Anchorage right there. It's just right across the bay. So you can see the significance. Yeah, it would definitely disrupt life there in Anchorage. And normally because of the jet streams, uh, yeah, the ash would be carried from uh, the west to the east. Right there. Let me light that up for you so you can see it. Here's Mount, Mount Spur, and there's Mount, or there's the city of Anchorage. Yeah, it's only 80 miles from Anchorage. Overflights of the volcano on March 7th and 11th measured significant elevated volcanic emission gases with, like I said, sulfur dioxide levels reaching about 450 metric tons per day. Newly activated gas vents, or fumaroles as they're called, have been, have been observed at Crater Peak, further suggesting increased volcanic activity. Even though they say it could be weeks or months for a volcanic eruption or even an explosion, I can't help but think about Mount St. Helen, how that one erupted with very little notice and, and 19 people, many of them were scientists that were killed by the uh, unexpected eruption. Many scientists currently there say that they expect a surface heating prior to any eruption, which could provide days to weeks of additional warning. Yeah, let's pray that they do if they're lucky. Remember the bulge on Mount St. Helen? How quickly that grew? Mount St. Helen's north face was displaced outward by at least 270 feet for the rest of April and early May. This bulge grew by five to six feet per day, and by mid-May, 
It extended more than 400 feet north. About 10,000 earthquakes were recorded before the May 18th event, with most concentrated in a small zone, less than 1.6 miles or 2.6 kilometers directly below the bulge. Before the eruption on May 18th, there was no increase in sulfur dioxide. There was no increase in ground temperature readings. There was nothing to reveal any changes indicating a catastrophic eruption. And that's what happened. And they continued to depend on, you know, gas emotions, uplift, and ground heating. And it didn't work then, and you just don't know. Will they get a warning this time? I wouldn't put my uh, eggs all in one basket. You can expect an ash fall when this volcano decides to go off. Not only will it affect air quality, but if it lands on the power lines, which more than likely it will do, it would create arcing, and you would have massive power outages which would affect the infrastructure and you think about the public water um, and all kinds of things that are attached to electricity um, sewer lines you know pumping stations things like that yeah it would also pollute um, the water drinking water i would not advise anybody to go outside when the ash is falling because any ash um, inhaled would be like cement in your lungs it's got little shards of glass where you can't cough it out yeah it would just be embedded in your lungs so you just don't, can't think about people you also have to think about livestock you also have to think about pets so now would be the time to stock up on food and water so you don't go outside you don't know how long an eruption would take place and how long the ash would fall. You don't know how long the power would be out, and it would be out. When they did have the eruption in 1992, it did cause water supply issues in Anchorage, like pH drops and a high count of particles that were in the water. Environmental effects included lahars. Environmental effects included lahars damming the Chakakadna River and ash clouds impacting Denali National Parks and nearby valleys because the ash ended up inside the, the water system. It settled in pipes causing blockage and local flooding during the spring thaw. Some of the health impacts included heart attacks from people shoveling ash. Stormwater systems also ended up having blockages. This led to water pressure issues and local flooding during the spring thaw. After the eruption, cleanup efforts necessitated a peak four-hour water demand of 230 million liters per day, making a 70% increase which strained, which strained the Anchorage water and wastewater utility systems. Water pressure and supplies problems continued, with some reservoirs dropping to dangerously low levels and at least one being completely emptied. The opening of the Anchorage International Airport was delayed due to insufficient water for runway cleanups, affecting stranded passengers by rendering toilets unusable because of all the ash in the stormwater systems causing blockage that led to local flooding during the spring thaw removal of ash required the use of vacuum trucks the following spring highlighting the prolonged infrastructure challenges now they're saying that the anchorage airport was closed for 20 hours due to the ash fall Ash can cause jet engine failure. The economic toll was substantial, with the municipality of Anchorage reporting nearly $2 million in damage. Now, that was 1992. You know what it would probably, with inflation, what it would cost now. Um, this encompassed cleanup co costs, office closures, and other related expenses. Additionally, Numerous small-scale losses were incurred by businesses. 
So all you can do is be prepared, realize what will probably happen later down the road when it does erupt, and be ready. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.